Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President and CEO of the International Facility Management Association, Tony Keene. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to San Diego for World Workplace 2016. For the first time, brought to you by IFMA in collaboration with the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. So on behalf of everyone at IFMA, our sponsors, exhibitors, partners, and collaborators, I want to be the first to officially welcome you and say thank you for being here today. So while we're just gearing up for an exciting few days, I am convinced that the global facility management community will be taking and talking about the outcomes of this year's events for years to come. This year's World Workplace promises to stand out. And that's because this year, we stand together on the brink of an exciting new frontier for FM. This is possible because of the pioneers of facility management, the professionals who over the last 36 years have established FM as a mission critical discipline. Today, this thriving global industry accounts for more than a trillion US dollars in spending power each year. You join as many as 25 million people around the world who are involved in facility management, each of who continues to build their own collective FM story. This is the essence of this year's event theme. The FM story is ours to share. Carl Sagan once said that if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. His point is that none of us got to where we are today just by ourselves. The work and the progress that we make would not be possible if it were not built upon the work and progress of those who came before us. Less than half a century ago, the profession we now celebrate as a crucial component of business success had yet to find a common identity. From its beginnings in the 70s and 80s, early FM champions recognized the potential to leverage the workplace as a tool to enable productivity and achieve organizational objectives. Later, through the robust global job task analysis process, the definition of facility management took shape. From there, the development of professional credentials allowed FMs to teach, learn, validate, and refine their skills. Today, more than 10,000 FM professionals have earned one or more of IFMA's credentials. The must-have facility management professional, the FMP, the Specialized Sustainability Facility Professional, the SFP, or the Highly Regarded Certified Facility Manager, our CFM. So I'd like to welcome anybody who's earned any of these designations to please stand now and be recognized. As you look around the room, there's a lot of people who have done that, so thank you very much. So thank you for not only investing in your own careers, but because in doing so, you were building a profession around you. Without you, the countless contributions of professionals like you would not, it would simply not be possible to venture into new frontiers of FM. Throughout history, when the conditions are just right, there are major leap forwards in culture and technology. Think of what needed to be in place before Johannes Gutenberg could invent the printing press. Beyond metal and paper, he needed a language and a written alphabet. Today's connected devices and the internet continues to revolutionize the world around all of us. That's all been made possible by building on centuries of human knowledge and innumerable advances in technology. Right now, the FM profession around the globe, we sense the conditions are now just right for our own major leap forward. We are seeing a profound global appreciation of what FM offers in a way that simply wouldn't have been possible just simply a few years ago. In April 2016, we announced the landmark collaboration between IFMA and the RICS. This collaboration has opened the door to the future of our industry. It is the platform from which facility management will achieve pervasive global recognition and individual FM professionals will find exciting new opportunities to advance and grow within their careers. For example, we have developed a career map for professional recognition in FM that will broaden the horizons for anyone working in FM, 
no matter where you are in your career. In recent years, the CFM has emerged as the accepted mark of confidence in the comp competency of practicing facility managers. Now the CFM, FMP, and SFP will reach new heights of local and global recognition alongside the RICS professional qualifications that have been in existence for more than a century. Beyond the alignment of the credentials from across the spectrum of FM practice, the collaboration is working to bring a new level of consistency and a common language to facility management through global standards. In addition, the collaboration also combines the knowledge resources and the thought leadership already represented by both IFMA and RICS, offered through vehicles like our online knowledge library, FMJ Magazine, and other publications. Clearly, the FM tide is rising, and this rising tide is raising all of our boats. Whether you are sitting in the audience today as a student, preparing to enter the field, or a seasoned professional, the opportunities to advance in facility management are yours for the taking. With the resources available to you as a result of the IFMAR ICS collaboration, you can write your own personal FM story of success. You are the ones who define FM. None of these exciting developments would have been made possible without the decades of work that has come before us, and none of it would be possible without our partners in collaboration, the RICS. So I'd like to recognize our RICS friends and collaboration ambassadors at this time. If you're in one of those people, please stand up. So now, I'd like to introduce my counterpart and partner, the CEO of the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, Sean Tompkins. Well, good morning, Tony. It's really wonderful to be here with you in San Diego for IFMA's World Workplace 2016. The energy of this event is exciting and is a great indication of the potential we have to truly define FM on a global scale together. Our collaboration will define and standardise credentials, practice standards and professional developments for the industry, uniting the global FM community to reduce inconsistency and fragmentation of strategy across the life cycle of the built environment. It will give FM professionals a global chartered status and enhance the profession and attractiveness for generations to come. By coming together in this way, two leading organisations are combining a global standards reach and a deep understanding of the FM sector to ensure all FM practitioners and their clients benefit from consistent world-leading professional standards and guidance. Amongst other things, the collaboration will focus on training and equipping FM professionals with the knowledge and tools they need to deliver and use consistent international standards. This will not only generate tangible benefits, but it will help create a labour market for FM professionals by clearly articulating to hiring managers what skills and knowledge are needed to effectively execute the FM role. Tony, together we will define the future of the FM profession. We at RICS look forward to working hand in hand to form a powerful and productive community to the benefit of all of our collective professionals. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage someone who has helped, who's someone whose leadership has helped to make this collaboration possible. IFMA's Chair and Managing Director at Jones Lang LaSalle, Maureen Ehrenberg. <laughs> Good morning, Sean, and good morning to everyone here at World Workplace 2016. We are so excited to have the RICS together with IFMA on stage to kick off this defining moment for global facility management. This is truly a historic time for our business. It's a historic time for our industry. The excitement around the IFM, well, I'm going to call it IFMA, RICS <laughs> collaboration is in the air here and around the world. And people are beginning to grasp the breadth and the impact these combined resources are bringing to the table for everyone and for the FM professionals here in the room today. So while the collaboration is being celebrated here with all of you in San Diego, we're gaining profession, um, professionals from around the world looking at this recognition. So let's take a look.
together from around the world to agree to define and redefine together the exciting and evolving profession of facility management. Let's start by hearing from one of our friends in London. He's up there towards the left. What about you, Marquis? Hi there, this is Marquis. I'm currently based in London. When someone asks me to explain FM, I tell them that at its heart, FM is about problem solving. Every new day provides exciting new challenges. I never get bored. This collaboration is about promoting the value of effective or strategic FM and the benefits of a career map for both seasoned and aspiring FM professionals, whilst simultaneously demonstrating the value of FM professionals to the built environment. This is a major advancement for a profession which is increasingly seen at the very heart of any business's corporate real estate strategy. Let's hear from our fellow FM, Courtney, about how she defines FM. Hey everyone, Courtney here. I'm a facility manager based in New York City. And for me, FM is about ensuring that people who work in my building are happy, healthy, safe, and productive. The collaboration is about identifying the concrete value that a well-honed, organized, and officially managed facility provides to all of their stakeholders. Again, it is you, the people that make that happen, and who leverage the promise of FM to deliver that value. So let's hear from, uh, let's see, uh, maybe someone from Canada? How about you down there, Joe? Hi everyone, this is Joe from Toronto. Outside of people, my company's largest investment is in its facilities. As a facility manager, it's up to me and my team to ensure a strong return on that investment. The collaboration is focused on clearly defining FM in the understanding of facility owners, operators, tenants, occupiers, and beyond as the heart of operations and delivering the human experience. It looks like we've got some uh, video call and attendees, though, who are down there in the bottom right. What are you guys up to? So excited about defining FM. It's the heart of the industry. Can you feel the beat? Wow. Please join me in thanking our performers, three cool dudes. Like all music, drums are a universal language that transcend time and culture. A drum beat can connect people, creating unity through a shared experience. And creating unity through shared experience is exactly what we're doing here this week. FM is on an extraordinary trajectory that is changing our business and our industry rapidly. Together, the global FM community is charting the new direction of our industry. Our global presence 
and local understanding of the very F various FM markets is advancing and redefining facility management. As the world is changing around us, it's changing faster than almost any time in history. The way we work and the way companies find people with the skills they need is changing too. We must adapt or risk being left behind. Our business partners are also on the path forward with us. Working hand in hand, we are responding to these changing business needs. Business has been and continues to further globalize. Digitization and the Internet of Things have only pushed this process forward faster and more effectively, and FM is no exception to this digital revolution. Within FM, digitization is having a huge impact on how we work and how real estate is changing as an asset class. New technologies are automating our end-to-end -end processes, capturing vast amounts of data, making us more efficient, more compliant, and more transparent. The data derived from these new technologies allows us to create more intelligent maintenance plans and improved workplaces. Equally importantly, we can turn this data and analysis into real business intelligence and benchmarking that can support larger business strategies. Automation is beginning to make our day-to-day -day activities more efficient and effective, while also enabling us to elevate our position by providing strategic and actionable recommendations to the business. Digitization is also allowing us as facility managers to create better human experiences for our employees, vendors, visitors to the public, and the public. We're, we're partnering to align a facility and the organization's culture and brand and provide a workplace that employees enjoy coming to, or we're partnering with IT and HR to create seamless electronic business work environments so employees can work anywhere they want, anytime they want. Facility managers, now have tools and data to improve the workplace, helping the business to attract and retain top talent. The digitization of FM doesn't stop there, though. As an industry, we've been concerned with energy and sustainability for quite some time. We've made tremendous progress lessening the impact of our facilities on the environment, but the rise of digital FM will only help us further our energy and sustainability efforts. From technologies that can remotely monitor and control systems to technology that provides individual lighting and temperature controls, our ability to measure and control our environmental impact is only getting better. It's also no secret the facility managers are being called to take on more responsibility when it comes to compliance, providing proof of work completion, ensuring the facilities comply with relevant regulations and codes, and providing transparency into billing and payment. Digital FM provides the details and tracking capabilities they allow us to effectively and efficiently provide the follow-up and documentation we're being asked for from the business, from our clients, and from our business partners. Recognizing the change we are driving and that which is occurring around us is just one piece of the puzzle. Technology and data on their own cannot ensure our success. We need the skills to plan, to advise, and to leverage the data to our advantage. We need to understand the importance of effectively implementing process and data standards. We also must effectively communicate our strategy to business leaders and to calculate the return on investment on the productivity initiatives that we are recommending. But how can we do this? What are the skills we need to develop for ourselves and for our teams? How can these skills be attained? Without a doubt, the training and thought leadership found in professional organizations like IFMA and our ICS will play an increasingly vital role in the development of our workforces as we move forward. Third-party validation of knowledge and skill through professional credentials is imperative as the world around us continues to transform and globalize. To fully recognize and realize these benefits and to elevate the facility management profession, we need to unify globally as a profession. Once we truly unify globally, we need global standards, we need credentials that are aimed at advancing our profession both tactically technically, and strategically. We need to align our skill sets with the changes we're seeing in our industry. We've made tremendous progress over the past few decades. However, our industry is still highly fragmented, both geographically and in regard to our protocols and our standards. To succeed in our increasingly connected global economy, we cannot continue um, with the fragmentation that's all too apparent across the globe. I'm sure many of you see it in the different markets that you work in, you see it across your own organizations within your portfolios. And our fragmentation as an industry is costing money, it's reducing efficiency, and it's undermining our ability to show how the built environment can support and contribute to larger organizational strategies. 
Even worse, this fragmentation is impacting each of us in our organizations. It's impacting professional development and the broader development of the future of the FM workforce. The demands of FM continue to grow. We need a unified, skilled labor force with training that sets us up for success in a rapidly changing and global industry. That's why earlier this year, IFMA and RACS announced a landmark collaboration. Our collaboration is aimed at unifying the industry globally. Partnering together, we are creating a career map for professional recognition in FM and training and credentials that will provide us with a clear sense of identity as an industry, as an FM industry that is recognized not only by ourselves, but the other broader colleagues within the real estate industry and with broader business itself and government. We're looking at the skill sets needed to succeed in an industry that's rapidly advancing and increasingly becoming more complex. I'm incredibly excited about this new direction forward. We're gaining a clear sense of what success looks like. We're uniting together as a global community and furthering our strategic value as FMs. We're ensuring we have the vision, access, and skill set to grow and advance. We're embracing the opportunities before us in this ever-changing industry. And for those of you who are hiring FMs, we're creating a well-defined talent pool that can continue to learn and grow and provide you with great succession planning. For each of you who are FMs, you'll have training for a de defined set of skills that can be used anywhere in the world. You'll no longer need to learn a new set of skills for every building you manage, every country you enter into, or various portfolios that you manage globally. Through this collaboration, we're continuing to listen to each one of you in the field. With surveys like our global ta task analysis, we'll continue to work with you to understand the new training needed to succeed in facility management. The competencies continue to evolve as FM becomes more digital. Understanding technology and how to create business intelligence out of data are new skill sets that are emerging and that we're all working on developing. Our two organizations remain committed to staying at the forefront of providing what training is needed. Our collaboration also provides each of you with the opportunity to stay connected, share best practices, and stay educated on the latest advances in our industry. While many of you do this on an individual level, you now have the strength of two respected and globally recognized organizations behind you. Our collaboration is just the beginning. So we haven't achieved all these benefits yet. They are coming rapidly, and I think you're going to see over the next couple of days. We are very intentional about what we are doing with the industry, and it's to bring value to each of you as individuals, for the IFMA chapters around the world, and for everyone who takes FM serious as a global profession that continues to elevate in this changing workplace. This collaboration has given the FM industry a new energy and more solidarity than ever before. As the globalization and digitization of our industry continues, we can see the opportunities before us. Now with this collaboration, we'll have the structure and training to build our schools, skills and elevate our strategy, our presence, and embracing these opportunities. Please use the next two days to begin the unification. Collaborate with those around you to hear what common challenges we all see and discuss ways to take advantage of those challenges, turning them into real opportunities. Learn from one another and advance your skills. In a few minutes, we'll hear from a selection of FM stories from professionals just like you. In hearing these stories, we hope you'll find that you share a lot in common with our keynote speakers, and we hope you'll enter these next few days with a new level of inspiration. Unified and ready to embrace our changing industry and build and refine the skills needed to succeed and to continue to succeed. Now it's my honor to introduce you to Terry Lepofsky, who helped make it possible to share these personal FM stories with you today. Terry Lepofsky is the president of Ubiquity Leadership. For more than 15 years, he has worked with leaders from around the world, helping them refine their leadership, communication, and soft skills to achieve their goals, engage teams, and improve their organizations. He has served as a speaking coach for Dale Carnegie and TEDx. He is a licensed facilitator for Leadscape Learning, and he is a registered executive and leadership coach with the International Association of Coaches. Terry, welcome. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Thank you very much. Tell you what, let's start off with a question. What scares you? You know, I was reading online a little while ago, and you know the most common fear that people have? Is this. Public speaking. Guess what number two is? Yeah, death. <laughs> Dying. People would rather die than stand up on a stage like this. 
Now that's kind of funny, yeah, but it's also a shame because public speaking and just that sort of discourse in general is so vitally important to our human experience. As a matter of fact, since people stepped out of caves, it's what has brought people together. It's built tribes and strengthened communities. And after all, isn't that why we're here today? To strengthen this community of facility management? That's why we're here today and why we've gathered today. And you know, we've got six people who are going to do a wonderful job of sharing their stories with us today. And I'm going to tell you who you're going to have here up on the stage in just a second. From Arizona, we're going to hear from a student of FM. That's Jake Gano. Following Jake, we're going to hear from Jessica Bickle from Texas talking about being a newcomer to FM. Following Jessica, we're going to hear from Sue Thompson about being, let's call it an unintended facility manager. Then we're going to hear from an overachiever. Carolyn McGarry is going to share some stories with us, and she's coming to us from Colorado. And then after she comes up, all the way from Nigeria, we've got the, the, um, we've got the conqueror. The conqueror, Collins Oseamwan. Yeah. And finally, we've got a veteran of FM, and the veteran is Tina Schaus. I'm sure a few people have heard that name around as well. So if you heard these names, or if you haven't heard these names, I'm sure you're going to remember them before the end of today. Because these guys have worked really hard. Now, just in case anybody out there is thinking to themselves, you know what, I wouldn't mind telling my story at a future world workplace or somewhere else. Well, for your benefit, they've asked me just to kind of go through what it was that we did to prepare for today. So, take you back a couple of months. The very first thing that we did, I asked them the question, what do you want to talk about? What's the theme? What's the essence of your message? What's going to tie everything together and make sense? So once we had that theme, then we started building out a structure. And we started looking at the sequence of the story to make sure that it was going to be compelling for you and that it was going to make great sense. When we had that done, and by the way, that's the hard part, but once we had that done, then the real fun starts. Then we start working on the style, how people show up on stage, how they communicate non-verbally, how they use the unspoken word and pauses to emphasize things, how they smile and use their eyes, all of that good stuff goes into that bit. Now you'd think that that's it, right? That's, that's as much as you need. Practice, practice, and a lot more practice. Everybody who's about to come up on stage has practiced over and over and over. So remember, there's still the number one fear that people have, and what's that fear? Yeah, it's public speaking. So they're behind the curtain right now, and they can't hear me, or maybe they can, but what's going on when you're about to step onto a stage, two big things. One, your head spins. You're thinking about, did I prepare enough? Am I going to get this in the right sequence? Are they going to like me? All of those kinds of things. The other thing that happens, and I'm sure you guys can relate to it, the butterflies in the stomach. Right. So what do we do with that? With this, we do about a two to four minute mindful meditation, focusing on the breath. That's it. Every time your thoughts drift, you bring it back to the breath. And what that does, well, three things, gives you focus, clarity, and balance. When you're up on stage, those are pretty valuable things. What do you do with all this, though? The energy inside. Well, we use that for the forces of good, not for the forces of evil, right? Instead of thinking about all the things that could go wrong, we think about using that energy to deliver a more passionate talk so that it's more enjoyable for people out there. That's how we got ready. So these guys have worked really, really, really hard for quite a long time and for a pretty good purpose, right? Bringing this community together and strengthening this community. Now, let me take my speaking coach hat off for a second, and I'm going to put my audience coach hat on. Okay, I think if they've worked this hard, we owe it back to them. 
We owe it back to them to show them the appreciation that they're conquering this biggest fear that people have. They're stepping up on this stage and they're doing it for the good of every single person in this room. So what do you say we give back to them? When you hear something that resonates with you, when you see passion coming out in one of these talks, when you see something good up here and you know that it's for this community, let them hear you. And if you're one of those people that doesn't normally cheer, let today be the exception. Let every single person in the room, from those doors all the way to those doors over there, front to back, let's practice this once before they get up on stage, okay? We're gonna do this on the count of three. I want you to use your mouth, I want you to cheer, stomp on the floor if you want, use your hands, whistle, but every single person make some noise. Let's see if we can get IFMA to blow the lid off of this place. All right? Sound like fun? Are you guys with me on this? Because we're not, yeah, let's go. One, two, three, let's hear it, yeah. Oh yeah. You guys are absolute rock stars. Thank you very much. Let's keep that energy going right now and welcome to the stage from Arizona State University, the student, Jake Gano.